Hi everybody and welcome to a new STEM challenge. It is color house day at our school so I am on the yellow color house which I love being on the yellow color house um, so that's why I'm all in yellow plus we could all use a little sunshine at this time. So uh, we're going to do a bit of a STEM activity today that explores heat and we're actually going to use it by or explore it by making ice cream. So your first thought might be, I don't think that heat and ice cream actually go together, but it turns out scientifically that they do. So I'm going to insert a picture here of all of the ingredients that I used. So I've taken my ingredients and I've mixed them together. Normally I would use some vanilla as well. I happen to be out of vanilla because I've been doing a lot of baking and I cannot find any anywhere. So we're making chocolate ice cream today. Uh, so the cocoa powder is adding the chocolate flavor, but you do still need to add the sugar because it doesn't have any, cocoa powder doesn't have any sweetness on its own. So it's a little bit bitter if you don't add a little bit of sugar to it. So um, here's a good pro tip when you're doing this activity. You want to make sure you squeeze as much of the air out of this bag as you can so that when you put it into the bag with the ice and the salt um, and you start mashing it around, you don't pop this bag. And you also want to make sure that you use a, a good sealing bag on this um, because you don't want salt getting in your ice cream. We've done that before, um, and salty ice cream just isn't the best. So once you zip this in, then you're going to kind of make sure that you're surrounding your, your cream bag with ice and just move it around like this. So I am going to, we are going to talk a little bit today about the science here. So we said there was heat involved, and that doesn't make a lot of sense for making ice cream. So the heat is coming from our hands, the heat is coming from the room, and there's actually heat coming from the cream itself. So the cream has been in the fridge, but it's significantly warmer than the ice that's in the bag. So heat likes to go to cold places. And so what happens when we make this ice cream is the heat will leave the cream to try to warm up the ice, basically. So the salt helps the ice to absorb that heat a little bit better. And that's why you see road salt in the winter if you live in a, a warm place, uh, or a cold place, sorry. If you live in a cold place, you will see salt on the road sometimes, and because it, it actually helps to melt the ice faster. So the cream, the cream right now is in a liquid form. And it's actually going to, by pulling some of that heat away, it's actually going to transform into more of a solid. It won't be completely solid when we're done, but it certainly will be more of a solid. And the ice will actually, as it loses heat, the molecules or the building blocks that hold things together will spread further apart and it will transform into a liquid. So it's going to become water while this is happening. So I'm going to keep just massaging my bag of ice and cream and we're gonna come back in a few minutes and see what has happened to our cream. Well, I have been mixing my ice cream for about 10 minutes. And something that I want to show you is that there is a substantial amount of liquid in the bottom of this bag now. So the, the solid that was ice has become liquid water. And so that's, so you, that's proof of that heat going out from the ice and going, or sorry, the heat coming out of the cream and going into the ice and melting that. So. Uh, there is still some ice. If I kept going, it would eventually it would just all become water because uh, that's what's going to happen as we warm up the ice, right? So when we pull this out, 
our cream so the bag will be wet because it's been in the ice but you can see now that it's not liquid anymore now we could do this for longer and we could make it a little more solid or we could put it in the freezer at this point and let it freeze a little bit more or we could open the bag and we could have a sample so mmm homemade ice cream is the way to go so there is a heat activity changes of state as well we're going from solids to liquids and liquids to solids um, we've got some condensation on the outside of our bag which is a whole other thing that we could talk about uh, but we want to really think about the heat transfer when we're making ice cream so the next time you have ice cream or if you have a chance to make ice cream you can impress somebody and say well let me tell you how heat is involved in making ice cream and you're probably going to surprise a lot of people so thanks for watching today and if you make a flavored ice cream i would love to know what flavor you make and what you put in it to make that flavor and how delicious it was so have a great day and we will talk to you later